Hey guys, Kildare here, and today I'm going to be telling you some of the best heroes to start off with if you are new to Heroes of the Storm. These heroes are fairly simple. Just because they are simple, though, does not mean they aren't good. Many of them are really good once you get a firm grasp on them. I'll be starting off from the easiest to not as easy, and I'll try to spread the variety as much as I can in terms of assassins, tanks, supports, and specialists. Sadly, specialists drew the short straw in this list because they are a bit special, and they're not great to start off at. Due to this, the list consists of three assassins, three tanks, three supports, and one specialist. Since I've included so much variety, you may see some heroes that people might not consider easy to play, but I can assure you that these are great choices if you are interested in the role that they play, and they are a great stepping stone. Enough stalling, let's begin. Number 1, Jimmy Raynor. The main reason why Raynor is at the top of this list, and why most people suggest to play him in the first place, is because he is incredibly simple. Not only that, but when you boot up Heroes of the Storm, he is the protagonist of the tutorial, so by the time you enter a normal game, you should already know his moves and how to play him. He's a pretty simple man. Pick a target, shoot at it, there you go. You have mastered Raynor. Use this penetrating shot to keep baddies away from you, press W when you really want that bastard dead, and if you take too much damage, well it's okay, because your E will automatically look out for you. The only drawback is his lack of mobility, but apart from that, he was born to be the first hero you should play when you start playing Heroes of the Storm. Number 2, Muradin. But what if you hate the idea of being in the back line like a pussy? What if you want to be in the action and get your face pounded in? Well then, Muradin should be your choice. I would very highly recommend playing as him as your first tank, or if you are interested in tanking in general. He has an escape, a little low on the damage department, but hey, he has a stun, and if he gets hurt too much, just get the hell out of there for a few seconds, and your passive will heal you nice and good. He's pretty much noob proof as long as the noob remembers that his dwarf toss, or E, is meant to escape and not to jump to your death. He is a very good all round tank, and not only one of the easiest tanks to play, but by far one of the best in heroes in general. Give him a shot if you are interested. Number 3, Valar. If you are sick of mastering Raynor, then it might be time to move up on the ladder with Valar. She is just like Reyno, but has a few more damaging abilities, a wicked heroic ability, and an escape, unlike Raynor. She excels at persistent damage, and is known to be hard to kill, and can have good sustain, and also high damage output at times. A very versatile ranged hero that can tick nearly every box. She has very flexible talents, which makes her useful no matter what is thrown at you in terms of team composition. She can adapt to nearly any situation. Number 4, Lili. Sick of bastards killing you and your team, and you're ready to take up the support mantle? Well, good for you. Lili is the way to go. She has fairly good heals with a short cooldown, a flying snake that spits out lightning, and she can blind the enemies so they can't hit you anymore. On top of that, killing her is like trying to catch a greased up Scotsman, because her trait will make it that she runs faster while taking damage. Unlike other supports, she can actually hold her own in a fight, being able to serve as an off healer or DPS. On top of all that, she's pretty much invincible. No one would hit a little girl, would they? Number 5, Diablo. You might remember this antagonist that likes to theoretically feast on fear, despite Raynor's logic. Turns out he's also a really fun tank. He lacks any real escape, but when you're scaling as much health as Diablo, you'll be right. With the ability to grab enemies and headbutt them into your team, it is fun for all, except for the hero that you are decimating. On top of that, he has a move called Lightning Breath, which makes him unstoppable for a while, which looks suspiciously like fire, and he also has the ability to stop on the ground and make the worst looking pentagram ever. Number 6, Nazebo. Nazebo is the only specialist on the list, because specialists are a bit weird, and when Nazebo is the least weird specialist, you know I'm talking really fucking weird. Nazebo lacks any real escapes, but to its credit, he does not really need to be close to fights. Just send out your spiders and your froggies to do your work. 
Landing the zombie wall will take practice, but don't stress too much about it. I've been in plenty of games where Master and Azebos can't land it on stationary targets. Those shifty siege camps always one step ahead. If you like PvE over PvP, then Nazebo is your calling. With his retarded zombie bodyguard, he can show PvE who's boss. On top of that, he's also pretty good at PvP, because no one thinks that kamikaze frogs and spiders in a jar will be their demise. Boy, are they wrong. Number 7, Uther. Uther Lightbringer, who serves as your guide in the tutorial, is also a very viable support. He's a pretty useful guy who can stun, heal, and stun some more. Not to mention, if you die, you're still in the game because he can heal from the dead. However, just because you can doesn't mean you should, still try to have some life preservation. His overall kit is pretty cool and allows you to understand the utility of being a support. Much like Vala, Uther's talents allow him to adapt to nearly anything thrown at you. If you really think support is your calling, then Uther is the next best stepping stone up from Lili. Until he receives some arguably needed nerfs, he is an all-round powerhouse and a great learning guide on how the game works. Number 8, Tassadar. Normally, many people would say that Tassadar is one of the more difficult heroes, and to a degree, I agree. But playing him is by no means difficult. If you're sick of going full-blown support and still want to be useful outside of healing, then Tassadar is the one for you. Tassadar does not offer any inherent heals per se, but he is a pretty useful hero, and simply by reading his moves, it's pretty obvious what's to do. Let's have a look. Your Q is a shield, shield people, yourself, minions, fuck it, buildings, whatever, spam that shit, it's on a 4 second cooldown. His W is lightning puddle, lightning does not help people, so put it on the enemy, minions, structures, they can't run away from it, just zap shit with it. His E is fuck it, I'm out of here, you're being targeted, you're gonna die, turn invisible, unstoppable, and just waltz on out of there. His heroic is simple, see some poor unsuspecting expecting trap soul and and there you go tassadar number nine joanna if you like diablo but he wasn't invincible enough for you then you should move on to joanna her trait which you must activate grants her a powerful shield and the unstoppable buff her damage output is low, but she is a walking fortress. She has a slow, a blind, and Gazlo's heroic ability on a 10 second cooldown. Although she is practically invincible with the support, she does require a bit more skill than Diablo or Murden since she has no escape and works different mechanically. However, if tanking is your thing, then she is a go-to tank as well as Muradin. I personally don't enjoy playing her, but I cannot deny she is certainly a powerful pick and a very good tank. Number 10, Jaina. Jaina is a bit on the difficult side, but if constant DPS is not your thing and you'd rather do burst DPS, then she is the go-to hero, apart from Kel'thas and Li Ming. Be wary with Jaina, as she has zero escape and zero sustain. She is literally the textbook definition of a walking glass cannon. All of her moves do high damage, especially when comboed with each other, due to her passive. She has a water elemental, which is particularly useful in aiding her. Playing as Jaina, I would not recommend going out and picking fights on your own. Always stick with an ally and use the buddy system. She is good if you have learnt the art of not overextending, not dying, and being shit scared of every single bush you see. But if you've not learnt any of these, then you are going to have a bad time. I would not recommend playing her straight away. Play a few other assassins, and once you've learned the ropes and you really want burst damage, give her a shot. Well guys, thanks for watching. This was just a list of heroes that I would recommend, with a bit of variety in terms of role and playstyle. Like if you liked this video, leave a comment on what hero you started off with, and if it was a complete nightmare. I'm sure someone fucked up real bad and picked Abathur as their first hero. If you really like the sound of my voice that much, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I talk a lot, every single one of my videos. Hang around until you're sick of my accent. Have a good one.